Hey, I'm Sean. I'm an engineer living in the south of Ireland. And I just bought a boat. Ever since I was a little kid, I had this dream about owning and living on a sailboat. And now is finally the time to act on that. So I have absorbed so much knowledge and inspiration from other people who've gone through that process of buying a boat, fixing it up and living on it. And there's a chance for me to give back with that. So as much as possible, I'll take you along my journey on this boat, which is a steel Bruce Roberts Spray 33, built in 1997. Now I feel I should mention, these will not be how-to videos. Many people will even say that they are how-to not. And that's okay, that's okay. This is more about life sharing than anything else. So I'll be able to show you my honest opinion, my honest experience, the frustration, the confusion, the joy, and hopefully some successes along the way. And if nothing else, maybe we'll just have some laughs and some music too, or something like that. <laughs> To take my hand, we could fly so far away. Tell me, hey, what do you say? We could see the world packing up, packing in. You know that I call that a win, cause there's so much more out there than a nine to five. Made it to Cross Haven Boatyard. So, now to go in and try to find it. Where to begin? We found it. I'm actually not sure how long this boat has been on the hard, but in any case, it needs a little bit of love in the exterior. Steel. Obviously, you'll be signing up for a world of trouble. But there are just certain things about it. There's been a lot of love going into this boat. There's some people working. Hard workers. Now for the big climb aboard. Let's see. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, made it this far into the cockpit. It's really strange because there's people everywhere and they're all working and they look at me because they know I don't belong. But I love places, I love this place. Oh, nearly nervous to go down below. Here we go. Let's do it. You look so. So, oh, impressions. So one of the things that I know is going to be an issue in general is height. Um, I'm six foot two, so that's um, 188 centimeters. With the budget that I have, and given that um, you know the length will correspond generally to the height allowances in the interior, I don't know if it's going to get a whole lot better than this. But if I stand right here at the hatch, I mean, then I'm laughing. It's quite nice. Right, let's go for a little inspection. Oh, before I do, you can just see some of the work that went in here. This is beautiful. What have we got inside? Ah, no booze.
moment, only really finding small cosmetic issues, just um, seasonal changes in the wood, some small rust pockets in, the, in some of the metalwork. This is just, <laughs> this is just like one of the more fascinating things that I've found so far. I'm about to try it out. This is the bit. So, uh, yeah, if this is the boat that I choose, this is what I'll be calling my bed for the foreseeable future. Come on, let's go to bed. I'm gonna take my shoes off. Should I be weirded out by this? Nah, it's alright. It's all good. God, I'm so ungraceful. Oh, okay. yeah. That's surprisingly comfy. Come to bed. Unfortunately, with lockdown measures in place, I had to settle with a virtual tour from my parents. It was good to get their thoughts on my potential home, and it's a good thing I called too, because my dad had a pretty important question that I would have totally missed. I suppose when you meet a mermaid, what would you do then? I'd go and swim away. Uh, tour, yeah, yeah, tour. Part of what I wanted to mention as well is that I am incredibly inexperienced when it comes to this, when it comes to sailing. Um, any information I have coming in here today, and I'll start with the reason that I'm here today, it's to have the initial look to get that impression. How do I feel about it? That's beautiful, but one or two I know is going to need a bit of work. Um, that's something I'm prepared to do. It's actually something I want to do. Um, beyond that, anything that I am educated on is all self-education only by reading whatever books I can find, like Don Casey's Bibles, um, any blog posts, any videos, any other surveyor videos and tutorials, things like this, in general, just to look through and see anything that seems to be out of place. That is part of what I want to do here today. Whether or not <laughs> whether or not that I, I get it right is kind of irrelevant because if I like it, I will just get somebody who's trained to do this, somebody who's actually specialized in it. Well, a week has gone by, and now I'm back in Crosshaven Boatyard again, this time for the survey. Basically, the process that's happened in the last week is I've put in my offer. That has been discussed with the owner. We reached an agreement. Happy days. So I am here today to meet the surveyor to get a little bit more of an idea about what has been found. As far as I know, he's been here for most of the day. Um, so right now, it's more about just the report and anything that's of interest to mention. Well, I like that my thumb, most of the reading from the nature stuff. Or not much of so I've got to get one of those yeah. For anybody wondering about how can a survey look when it's ongoing, I guess it's something along the lines of this. It's really trying to get in to everywhere that you can. And unfortunately, it can result in a little bit of a mess. One of the problems that we've come across today is trying to examine the interior lining of the steel. Because of the paneling that's been put in place, it's near impossible to actually lift it off and see what's underneath. So the same issue that's been encountered on the interior steelwork, where the paneling has effectively blocked access. Very similar situation that we have below the cabin sole. Um, you can see certain parts here, uh, just certain elements. They're very difficult to access because, say down here, you've got the trim um, up against the saloon berths. Because of that, the trim would have to be removed to actually lift out that panel. And, well, it definitely raises an issue, an issue for general maintenance and storage. Um, but even down here, we've managed to get access below here. And in looking at this build, I mean, it is in very good shape. For a 20 year old boat. then it'll still be the same kind of situation, the same issue. It's a leap of faith. It's trusting that other areas will look the very same as this. Now, from talking to Andy, my surveyor, he had said that like one, one of the, the pros to having a steel boat is that if there is something that's wrong, it's really just a case of cut it out, fit a new piece. When you can look at it in the most basic sense, yes, at least if you find a problem, you can just go and fix it. But it is definitely one which comes with its cost and its time. Something else to consider. I'm back where I was before. Mostly because... I, I can't sit there. Can't go over there. Um, 
I use my imagination and just assume that everything uh, looks looks nice over there. At this stage, really just chilling out here. Got a little music playing. Um, trying to get a feeling for what this would be like to call home. As it is, I know I want a project, but I also want a balance. I want to have something where I can call it home, have it in the water, and not really just be stuck in a hole for the next five years of um i'm always fixing this and i'm always changing that and so on like it, it's a very different situation when you're maintaining something or fixing something that's finished but when you're talking about trying to overhaul something altogether that's a, that's another um that's another game one which is much more challenging and it can be a lot more intimidating so while i sit here you know say I've got my laptop so i'll just sit here and do some work and then after a while i'll just sit back a bit and think holy crap this place is big that's part of it uh, the other is would this be a suitable place to work to live and so on am i comfortable because again like height is some people end up saying tall people always find a way to talk about how tall they are and yeah they do they definitely do and it's not just because we like talking about it i'm not even that tall um it's more so thinking about it from a health perspective. I don't want to suddenly have a bad back just because it's not a good way to do things. Um, so yes, there will be those limitations. Can you stand up and walk around? Realistically, if you're going to live in a place of this size, of these proportions, particularly in a boat, do you really plan on spending your day standing up inside? No, I will say, yes, it would definitely be nice uh, to have some, like if it was a really rainy day, as it sometimes is in Ireland, really wet and windy and cold and windy and cold, really wet and cold and windy and cold. It would be nice to have space inside so you can be flexible, so you can still do anything that you would want to do inside. <sighs> there is a Dodger um, somewhere lying around here in all this, in all, in all this. Um, if that was set up, in the cockpit, at least that way, there would be somewhere to stand. The purpose of today's trip was to come down and meet with the surveyor and get some idea about what had he found. I was not able to record him in the process as it was really an all-day event and I wanted him to just have all the time to just go on through it himself without dealing with me. Um, upon meeting him, it was really just getting right into it, so I wasn't able to record much of that, but you will see that I have taken note of any particular findings from today and tomorrow he's going to give me the um the report that he's made as well so all these things will come into play for my my decision i don't know how much they're going to affect the price overall um because a lot of the findings that he had were things that i was aware of so there are certain elements in the steel that need to be tended to nothing that looks structurally concerning so that's good um a couple of cosmetic spots Again, these are areas which are a little bit more challenging, such as in the cockpit. So in there, uh, the storage areas, which are more curved, they're a little bit difficult to get into. They will just be a little bit difficult more than anything else, but they aren't unachievable. There's nothing like that. Nothing about this has been one big issue. So that was something which I did ask him. I said, is there, is there some overraining factor here that you can see where you say, no, walk away? That's a good and bad thing, I guess. Uh, there is no one big problem. There are just a number of issues that need to be looked at. And for me, having a look around after that conversation, um, as much as I can, again, there's still the issue with the engine where I don't know exactly what's going on. Same thing with the paneling behind me and all around. I don't know what's behind it. If I do decide to get into any type of layout adjustment, then it could be the case that that's the time to really look into it. But if it does become a problem, it can be fixed. He's like, yeah, I would definitely prefer to be able to take care of it now, but if it's not an issue, it is often the case of it's best let it lie, especially when you don't know what's going to happen as soon as you start lifting off a lot of panels. What if they all come crashing down? Oh, God. Okay, I'm going to go home. So after all that, I am now the proud owner of this Bruce Roberts Spray 33. All in all, you're talking about three weeks. That's what it took between the initial viewing and the final exchange of keys, let's say. Now, that is how much it may take on a normal basis, give or take. Um, in my case, I waited two months to actually go and look at this boat. Definitely worth the wait. 
For those of you who stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching. For anybody who skipped right to the end, hey, that's cool too. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time for when I get to meet the owner and learn some of the secrets about this boat. See you.